Hi, my name is Lee Savage and I work for the Developer Technologies team based in Edinburgh, Scotland. For this recording, I'm going to show you four applications that I have developed using the same code base so that it works on the desktop, browser, mobile and the creative suite. In Flash Builder, you can see that I have five projects. I have four, which is Air, Android, Flex and Creative Suite, which are wrappers that then use this shared library, which contains code with the behavior and the UI elements for this sample. So you can see here I have three components and two action script classes. If I open up the Air project, I have two classes. I have an MXML file, which is a windowed application, which takes a hold of the app model and then creates its own app controller, which is its action script class, which extends the app controller in the main library. I then include three components, which are the three components that are in my shared library, which is the UI that I use in my application. So if I just run the Air application, and here we are, I've got a simple um, image canvas in the top, and I have three buttons at the bottom, one for loading an image, for launching, and for sharing. So if I just click on load image, I'm just going to select a file, and here you see that the image canvas at the top has been populated with the image that I had, the file that I've chosen. I can now select launch and this is going to use the Air API to launch the, app, uh, launch the file in the default application which in my case is preview. I'm just going to close this and then I can go to share and share then gives me a login form to log on to photoshop.com. And I'm just going to upload that selected image to photoshop.com. So you can see down at the bottom here, I'm just adding some input for the user to know what's happening. And there you can see, we now go back to the viewer state and I've just been told the image has been uploaded successfully. So close out that. I can just show you that I've got two states, share where, which was the login form and viewer which is the image with the three buttons. So that's the MXML file for Air. Now if I show you Flex, and the only difference here is this kind of wrapper for the same code, is that I'm using an application, once again getting the app model. I've got a Flex app controller which is going to just override some of the behaviour, but once again you can see I have my states and I have the components that are from the shared library. If we then look at these two controllers and look at the main app controller. So this is the main app controller here. I do nothing in the constructor and I then have some public methods, load handler, launch handler and a share handler. And these are to do with the three buttons that are in the main viewer state. So the, share the load and the launch handler don't do anything in the main app controller and the share handler sets up some of the information for loading to ps.com and moves the application to be the share state. And if I look at the upload handler, which is the button in the share states form, it is just going to create a ticket from photoshop.com and it's then going to attempt to upload the image, which eventually calls the create asset request, which is going to upload our selected image to photoshop.com. And finally, I have one final function, which is using a URL monitor to check that if we have online access. So that's the main app controller. So if I now go to the Air app controller, it's just calling super on the constructor, but it's also checking if we have online access. And then you can see it's overriding the public fun function. So the load handler is using a file to browse for open and looking at the images. And the launch handler is using open with the default application. Upload an image is then passing this file to the create asset call in the super app controller class. 
So now if you look at the Flex App Controller, once again it's calling Super in its constructor, but it's also setting overriding the model.online um, property to be true. It doesn't have to check if it's online. And then it's also setting the model.launch to be false, which will then make the launch button be disabled, which as it's only using an Air API. And then the load handler is using a file reference. And once again, it's just going to super for creating the asset and passing the file object. So that's those two classes. I'll show you the app model, which is just a selection of properties that is going to be shared in the application. And it's bindable, so the application is always kept up to date when it is used. So I can now show you the Android application. And this has just got a couple of extra things. So it's using Air 2.5 compared to my Air application that is currently using 2.0, as it just hasn't been moved over. And the XML file has just got some further properties so it can tell the Android device about particular user permissions it would like, such as getting access to the internet and also getting access to the camera. So that's the XML file. It's also using application instead of Windows application. But you can see with the rest of the code, the app model, it's got its own Android app controller to override some of the behavior but the UI and the states are identical to all the other applications. And then we can just use, look at the Android app controller. Same again, it's going to check to see if it's got online access. It's also going to um, disable the launch button. And due to a bug currently in the Android, it's just going to make sure that the um, when entering the password, it's not using display as password due to the fact that it's got a bug and it's not finding the text properties. And then in the load handler, it's looking at the camera roll instead of using a file or a file reference. And the camera roll enables the user to get access to the images on the device. The upload in image needs to do some further processing so it can load the file promise from the device and then with this promise get access to the file and then call the super app controllers create asset function. I'll just show you a couple of other things. I have a certificate for signing my application and I also have a build.xml file for building my Android application. So if I highlight here, it shows you I've got my app name, showing you the directory, the XML file, the Swift, the app.xml file, the air file, build, bin debug, a number of things, and my certificate. And if I just show you the target that I'm using for compiling, which is this one here. So I'm using the ADT jar, I'm packaging up and I'm making the target to be the APK emulator in this case, store type, passing in the um, certificate, passing the app name, requesting for it to be an APK file, I'm passing in the descriptor file, this, um, the Swift file, and also an uh, image icon, um, an icon for the application. So now I can go to the, um, the terminal and I'm just going to start up the emulator. You can see here that I can um, build the file. And during the build it's going to ask me for my certificate password. and the build successful. And when the emulator is up and running,
And I can now use this command to install my application, pointing at my APK file, which was generated during my app build. And I can deploy this to my application. Apologies, this for some reason thinks my device is offline. And here you go, it said it's successful. So we can now go to the menu, the emulator, and here is my application. And here you can see it's similar to the Air app. It's got an image viewer, it's got three buttons, and it's using the same UI components, and it's fitted in nicely to the device screen size. So we're just going to select load image, and as you remember, it's going to use the camera roll to get access to the images. Now we're going to load that image, it's going to show it in the viewer, and we can now select share. You can see that the launch button is disabled as I set that within the constructor. And if I just click into here, you'll see that the keyboard will launch up to enable me to add in my details on the device. So that's the Android equivalent. And I can show you the same flex, just to show you that the UI expands to the browser. So here you go, you can see the, um, the main image viewer and the launch buttons. And if I just select an image, you'll see that it will expand and it's taken up as much room as possible. And finally, I'm going to show you the same application, just with some little overrides in the, contr in the controller. Once again, it's going to check if it's got online and I've disabled the launch button. The load handler is going to get um, access to Photoshop and it's going to find out its active document. And it's once again just calling the superclass to call create asset function. So we'll just run this in Photoshop so you can see. If I just load an image, and you can see here I've got my PSCOM CS file open, and same UI again, I can choose load image, and it's going to go to Photoshop and ask for its active document, and you can see here it's loaded it up, and the same again, I can go to share, and it's going to prompt me to log into Photoshop.com. So although they're in separate projects. I hope that this demo is demonstrated with little code and having a shared library. It's very easy to target the same application with the same UI and most of the same behavior into multiple devices. Thank you for listening.